So I'm sitting here next to Richard Hatch, Sir Richard Hatch. Um, just the first a chit chat question: How how are you? I'm doing very well. Actually, it's great to be here. It's long ways from home, and uh, I've been in Europe for about two weeks now, and uh, I'm having a very very good time. For the first time, I'm not just rushing in, rushing out, taking a little time to see the country and kind of, you know, hanging out with my friends and <clears throat> it's been a lot of fun. Do you have, do you have a lot of European friends? Uh, I do. Um, for some reason I've dated a lot of German girls. <clears throat> Don't ask me why, um, but I've dated a number of German girls so uh, I've been over here a number of times. Uh, I haven't been in this particular area before. Uh, I think this is one of the first times I've been here, although I was close to Amsterdam about um, three years ago. But, uh, you know, this is, uh, the people are so warm and so friendly, and the hotel I'm staying at, I've never met a hotel that was so genuinely hospitable. They bend over backwards to make you feel good, and uh, I wish the whole world was like this. So, right. your first opinion of Belgium is a, a positive one. Very positive, and uh, the women are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first question. I think your most famous character is, of course, in Battlestar Galactica. Right. But you're the only one who plays in the in the old Battlestar Galactica in the new one. Right. What is the first major difference between the old and the new series? Well, again, you can't compare two series done 30 years apart. It's impossible. It's two different eras, two different technologies, uh, two different ways of doing things. But <clears throat> I think the the, the big difference probably is the original kind of was more of a um, space opera was much more of a uh, a little bit along the lines of Star Wars it had a wonderful story but you know it didn't get too provocative or too deep or too much into the uh, the core uh, story of life and death it dealt with those issues but but it, it didn't it didn't get that dark and it was much more made for the family for everybody in the family, whether you you are old or young, <coughs> anybody could watch that show. The new show is much darker, much more provocative, much more edgy, and obviously probably um, would be more suited for a, a more sophisticated audience. Uh, but it's you know the new show is very, very intelligently written. Very, um, it's not afraid to get into those deep provocative issues that Battlestar Galactic is all about. Uh, it's it's a much more um, um, what's the word? Obviously, very powerfully moving because today, 30 years later, you can go explore much deeper subject matter, and you don't have to be so afraid of um, of alienating people because there's so many channels on TV. Uh, there's something for everybody, and uh, you know if you want something that's really, really hard hitting, really. Uh, profound, very moving, and uh, has a lot to say about the world, then the new Battlestar really serves that purpose. And it's an incredibly written, well-directed, and well-acted show. Uh, the original, again, <clears throat> was a lot of fun to work on. The characters were fun. We had a great extended sense of family. Um, the mythology and the backstory of the original was wonderful. Uh, but again, we were not able to, at that time frame, go into the more deeper uh, story uh, that that Battlestar is all about, but that sci-fi 30 years ago was not well accepted, and networks were terrified of, of anything that might be too edgy or provocative. So they were always writing you notes, you know, not to be too much this way or too much that way. They were always afraid that they were going to lose their audience. But you know, the networks didn't understand sci-fi fans. Sci-fi fans 30 years ago, sci-fi fans today, were the same group of people. You know, we love intelligent, visionary science fiction. Uh, obviously, we love a sense of humor as well. But we think we love we love shows that are about something that, at, at its core, explores those mystical questions that we all ask about who we are, where we come from, where we're going, is there life out there? So you know, sci-fi fans, and I include myself as one of them, and I've said this many times before, we we love great stories. Am I right to assume that the original Battlestar Galactica is a little more tongue-in-cheek, a little more campy than the new one? Yeah, well, the new one, you have to understand, back when we did it, we weren't looking at it as being campy. We were just looking at it 
as being a little bit lighter, a little, well, I, you know, it's really weird. If I, if I think about it, when we made Battlestar back then, it was considered dark. Yeah, but that's the 70s, of course. Yeah, for the 70s, we were actually dark. So, I don't know what to say. We were pretty heavy for, for that time frame. But, you know, life has changed. The world's changed. We're, we're no longer afraid to, you know, explore anything. I mean, there's channels for everybody out there. So, uh, you know, for me, I love great science fiction. And I love the original show for different reasons. I love the new show for other reasons. I, I think they're two great shows done in two totally different eras. And to compare them does, does an injustice to both shows. Um, you've done a lot of small parts in a lot of series, for example, Baywatch, but even Murder, She Wrote. Um, do you remember working with Angela Lansbury, which is a living legend? Well, please don't mention Baywatch anymore because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the black spot on your resume? No, 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 no. It was fun. You know, it's fun to be on any show, but, but I, I really do appreciate doing characters that are... Uh, I, I consider myself more of a character actor. I, I never thought of myself as a leading man. I always liked characters that were, you know, much more... Leading men were not that interesting years ago. Today, leading men are basically character actors now. So it's a much better time for leading men. But uh, I love working with Angela Lansbury. She's a classic, you know, beautiful, wonderful, talented, gifted actress. And the show, I, I actually did the very first Murder, She Wrote. Uh, so we had a lot of fun. and. Um, I, uh, but, but, you know, my, the, the memorable roles for me <coughs> were uh, things like Jan and Dean, Dead Man's Curve, the story of Rockstar, Rockstar's Jan and Dean. Um, I did a medical center with Chad Everett where I played a mentally retarded young man. Um, I, I just did a movie called Inaliable where I play a really interesting character that uh, Walter Koenig from Star Trek wrote. Uh, there's Tim Russ and a lot of other Star Trek actors are in it. I love that character. There, there's certain roles that, that really brought out the best in me. And I'm one of those actors, I have to connect to it, you know, in my gut, in my heart, in order to do my best work. You have to believe it, actually. I have to, I, I have to really care about the story and I have to care about that character. You know, there's a lot of characters you get offered, but they, they just don't, they don't excite you. I, I need something that really grabs me. Can you give an example of a character that was offered to you, but that you said, no, I can't do this, I, I don't feel it? Um, well, um, I, I was offered a lot of things back in the day. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to go into the movies I, was t I turned down, or the projects I turned down, but I turned a, a lot of projects down that Tom Selleck ended up doing. Tom Selleck was, was called the, uh, the uh, pilot king because he did you know, some 15 pilots. None of them sold until Magnum P.I. finally made, a, made him a big star. But until that time, I turned down a lot of stuff uh, that he went and shot. You know, which is not me better or he, him worse. He, I, I think the smart thing was what he did, actually. I think you can be too careful, too afraid to make the wrong decision, and too uh, precious with your choices. Sometimes you just got to get out on the dance floor and have a good time and go for it and the doorways will open, the opportunities will come and eventually you'll find that place that's right for you. I, I just was a very idealistic actor that was looking for something heavier, deeper, more profound. I wanted something I could bite my teeth into and I turned down a lot of things, probably way too many things back then. I wish I had. That's my big lesson. You're uh, considered a veteran actor right now because you're f uh, you were born in 1945. Um, when you work with a with a younger crew, <coughs> do you feel the need to inspire them or to teach them something? I'm not talking only talking about younger actors, but also younger directors because you have a lot of experience. Right. Um, well, I, I'm a I'm a writer, a director, a producer. I teach. I lecture all over the country. Uh, I love doing anything that involves the creative process of putting something wonderful together, putting wonderful stories together, uh, bringing people together to create something extraordinary. I, I love that whole process. Um, age is a relative term because, uh, you know, some people get old, you know, way too, too young. Uh, some people that are much older are much younger, uh, not only mentally but physically. The way you take care of yourself, what you do with your life, it has to do with so many different things. But, but experience is something that comes from doing something for 
for long enough to learn, you know, about yourself, about what works, about what doesn't work, and uh, gaining maybe a more expanded view of things, being less judgmental, less critical, more embracing, more, uh, <clears throat> more collaborative, more give and take. And I think that the big lesson, also obviously, for young filmmakers is sometimes they get too tunnel vision. They, they get too locked into what they think something has to be, and they don't see the larger picture. They're not able to take advantage of the moment. So many things change when people get together creatively to, to put something, to make something happen. And if you lock yourself into the way you think it has to be, you don't take advantage of the moment when all kinds of extraordinary things start to happen because so many creative energies have come together and start igniting one another. And then that collaborative magical process starts and then all kinds of epiphanies and wonderful things happen that, that, that a really good director takes advantage of. But you know, we all have to live and learn and uh, there's young directors that are better than, than directors who have been directing for 40 years. Uh, there's actors who never acted before that, that are just absolutely extraordinary. Um, experience is something that is wonderful, but it doesn't necessarily always make you the best at something. You can make a thousand mistakes, but you just have this gift that maybe you were born with. So again, I've seen people grow from being okay actors to being really, really good actors. And I've seen some actors that are just, the minute they step in front of a camera, they blow people away. <clears throat> it's not about being perfect. It's not about being right. It's not about being old or young. You can be old and extraordinary. You can be 12 years old and extraordinary. Age has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with who you are, what you're made out of, your heart, your soul, your gut, and your courage. So don't let anything get in the way. Um, maybe final question. You uh, brought the trailer for the second coming, Battlestar Galactica, the second coming. Yes. Uh, why was it never picked up, that series? I mean, what happened to, to the second coming? Well, second coming kind of followed on the heels of first coming. Uh, it, was a, it was a porno, uh, you know, based on... Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> all right, well, I'll roll that back. Um, you mean the second coming? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, <clears throat> why was it never picked up? Because uh, the truth of it is, you can help inspire um, a revival. You can get people excited, which is what we wanted to do when we created the Second Coming trailer, which was giving you know a vision of how the show could be brought back 30 years later, and also a way to excite and bring back to people's attention how wonderful Battlestar Galactica was. Um, but once people get excited, you know, the networks and studios have their own agendas and just about any producer is going to have their own vision for how they want to do a story. So ultimately, you know, people want to do it their way. And there are many ways to do anything. But any producer, director with their salt is probably going to come up with their own idea of what works and what doesn't work. And they're going to follow that vision. And there are many ways to make something work. Not just one way. There are many ways to do it. Uh, some of those ways are less, you know, um, <clears throat> dramatic, less powerful, but there are a lot of talented, gifted people out there, and I'm sure every actor, I mean, not every actor, but every writer, director, producer, every uh, um, fan out there probably has their own idea of how they would like to see Battlestar Galactica. But fortunately, when they brought back this particular show, they happened to hire one of the most talented, gifted producers on the uh, scene today to help envision a new Battlestar. So we got an extraordinary Battlestar Galactica, although I would have also loved to see a continuation, which is what I fought for for so long. Um, I would have given anything to see a continuation first, you know, some 30 years down the line. Uh, I felt that would have been a wonderful bridge between the old show and the new show, uh, but that's not what they did. But fortunately, again, they came up with an extraordinary vision, an extraordinary way to reimagine the show, and they did an incredible job. Just like Star Trek, you know, <clears throat> they've had several different variations of Star Trek. So th there's many kind of, I think, ideas that could be spun off from Battlestar. Who knows? The Pegasus story, they could do a, a whole thing based on the original series, 30 years into the future, which I think Tom... Uh, DeSanto from X-Men and Transformers who produced those shows would love to do. Um, I, I mean, there's, again, there's just many, many different 
uh, ideas and concepts. They could even reboot it again, although, you know, uh, it, it's, it's not that easy to come up with a success, uh, successful formula and to do something that's really going to be, be compelling and really move the fans. They did it once. Very rarely do you bring back a classic and make the fans happy. Uh, this was one of those times when they developed a whole new fan base and pulled over some of the older fans. But, uh, you know, if they rebooted it again, the chances of, of doing, doing that again are, are slim. But I, I, I would never say never because Ron Moore blew me away that he was able to do something so well that he got over the hump and enabled a lot of fans to come over and embrace the new show. I, I didn't think that was possible, even if the show was extraordinary, which it is. Uh, because we, you know, fans get very uh, tied to their original characters and stories and themes. You know, they hate to see things change too much. But you know, anything is possible. So we'll see. Well, sir, I hope you never lose your enthusiasm, and uh, I wish you a long and healthy career. Well, thank you. You noticed my enthusiasm, did you? Uh, Have a great day. By the way, drink Red Bull. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>